Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about the carpal tunnel and then also talk about something called carpal tunnel syndrome. Now, the carpal tunnel is a narrow passageway found on the anterior portion of the wrist. It serves as the entrance to the palm for several tendons and the median nerve. Carpal tunnel syndrome is a condition that occurs when the median nerve is compressed within the carpal tunnel. This is a common condition that causes pain, numbness, and tingling sensation in the fingers, especially at night. Let's talk a bit further about the anatomy of the carpal tunnel. The carpal tunnel is a narrow passageway that allows tendons and the median nerve to pass from the forearm to the palm. This passage is bordered by a combination of bone and ligament structures that create its unique shape and function. Talking about the borders, the tunnel's floor and sides are formed by the carpal bones arranged in a concave shape known as the deep carpal arch. The roof is made by the flexor retinaculum, a thick connective tissue band forming the arch into a closed tunnel. The carpal arch. This structure is defined by specific bones, laterally by the scaphoid and trapezium tubercles, and medially by the hook of the hamate and the pisiform. The flexor retinaculum serves as the tunnel's roof, and it spans between the hook of the hamate and the pisiform medially to the scaphoid and trapezium laterally, effectively converting the carpal arch into the carpal tunnel. To locate the carpal tunnel on yourself, the distal wrist crease serves as an excellent landmark, aligning with the tunnel's entrance. Now, the components of the carpal tunnel. The carpal tunnel houses nine tendons enveloped in synovial sheaths, facilitating their smooth movement alongside the crucial median nerve. The tendons here include the flexor pollicis longus tendon, four tendons of the flexor digitorium profundus, and four tendons of the flexor digitorium superficialis. All these tendons are essentially your flexors. They help make a fist. Notably, the flexor carpi radialis tendon, often mistaken to be within the tunnel, actually lies outside, beneath the flexor retinaculum. And of course, there's a median nerve. Upon traversing the tunnel, it branches into the recurrent branch and palmar digital nerves, crucial for sensory and motor innovation of the hand. And this leads us to carpal tunnel syndrome. Carpal tunnel syndrome manifests from the compression of the median nerve within the carpal tunnel, leading to pain, numbness, and paresthesia, primarily in the lateral third and a half digits. It represents 90% of all nerve compression syndromes, so very common. Carpal tunnel syndrome shows a high prevalence in women, particularly between the ages of 45 to 60, so really menopausal. Risk factors include gender, as we mentioned women, age, obesity, risk injuries, and certain systemic conditions such as diabetes and rheumatoid arthritis. The typical clinical presentation, so the typical signs and symptoms, well, people typically report worsening symptoms at night. Symptoms are worse at night because when individuals are not active during the night, there is an increase in fluid around the hands, an increase in carpal tunnel pressure. They often wake up and have to shake their hand to get relief. On examination of carpal tunnel syndrome, sensory deficits usually occur late in the course of carpal tunnel syndrome, and they involve, as mentioned, the first three and a half fingers but spares the thena eminence. Weakness, however, occurs in thumb abduction and thumb opposition, which can also lead to ape-looking hands. Atrophy of the thena eminence may be present because many muscles here are innervated by the median nerve. There are also provocative maneuvers which are pivotal for clinical diagnosis of carpal tunnel syndrome. Provocative maneuvers essentially try to aggravate or stimulate 
the symptoms of carpal tunnel. And these include tinnel sign, where someone taps on the volar aspect of the wrist over the median nerve, and this will produce symptoms in the distribution of the median nerve typically. Then there is a Fallon sign, where the wrists are flexed essentially 90 degrees for 60 seconds and may reproduce symptoms in the distribution of the median nerve. Then there's a closed fist sign where flexion of the fingers into a closed fist for 60 seconds may produce the paresthesia in the median nerve distribution. And finally, there's a compression test where pressure is done by the examiner with their thumb on the palmar aspect of the patient's wrist for 30 seconds, which may produce the paresthesia in the median nerve distribution. Investigations and management. While the diagnosis of carpal tunnel syndrome is primarily clinical, using all the history, the signs, and clinical examination, nerve conduction studies can aid in confirming median nerve damage in uncertain cases. First line therapy is conservative management. And this includes wrist splinting and hand therapy, with a corticosteroid injection and anti inflammatory drugs being optional in certain situations. Then there's surgical treatment, and this is reserved for cases that are unresponsive to conservative measures. Carpal tunnel release surgery involves severing the flexor retinaculum to alleviate median nerve compression. So in summary, the carpal tunnel is a narrow passageway that allows tendons and the median nerve to pass from the forearm to the palm. However, the median nerve can be compressed due to a variety of risk factors and conditions that can lead to something called carpal tunnel syndrome, which really manifests as numbness, pain, altered sensation in the lateral third and a half digits or fingers, the thumb, the index finger, and the middle finger and the half. Treatment includes conservative and surgical management. Thank you for watching.